with Christmas just around the corner. It is a great time to shower our pets with love. But what are the best treat options and what should we avoid? Joining us now with all of her expert pet advice is Vitapet vet Dr. Lauren Bleakin. Good morning, Dr. Lauren. Good morning. Great to have you back in the home studio with me today. Great to be here. So what are some of the absolute no-nos for our dogs and puppies when it comes to treats at this time of year? Yeah, so there's a, a few sort of food categories that are human foods. So your fatty foods is a, is a Christmas one in particular. So um, your meats uh, that come with a big fat skin on them, um, gravies, that kind of thing. Uh, and they can also be quite salty. So be careful with that. They can cause pancreatitis in Ooh. our pets, which is not nice at all. Um, and then grapes and the grape family. So sultanas, so uh, currants can fall in that, raisins, obviously. Mm. Um, those can all cause renal damage in our pets so um, again careful with fruitcakes um, and then the other sort of seasonal food category where we see it is is your garlics and onions which are often present in things like stuffing so those can cause issues in our pets as well so there there are that's not an exhaustive list but just yes. some of those seasonal watch outs that we see around this time of year who knew and chocolate is definitely a no-no right yes absolutely good one to call out because we get lots of chocolates laying around um, and those are definitely a no-no in our cats and dogs and definitely result in a vet visit if you're not careful. Okay, so that's mainly puppies and dogs. Mm -hmm. What about anything specific to cats that we might like to treat at this time of year? Yeah, so when it comes to dietary things, their list is, is very similar to dogs. It's not identical, but if it's a no-no for a dog, likely to be a no-no for a cat. So bear in mind all the things that we listed before. But seasonally, again, it, it, not always seasonal, but we see more bouquets at this time of year. Yes. Cats are quite unique in that lilies are really toxic to them, um, the lily flower family. So um, they just have to come into contact, just touch their nose to the tip of a, a lily stamen and they can go into renal failure from it. So really severe and um, really easy to, for them to fall victim to that, especially with those holiday bouquets around. So just take care with that one. And with Christmas li lilies around as well, that's really tricky if you've got a cat. Yeah, absolutely. All right. We all sometimes think that giving cats dairy products is a good idea, but that's a no-no. Yeah, well, adult cats and dogs are lactose intolerant. So just a reminder <laughs> that we can cause a little bit of GI upset in them doing that. So um, things like a pet milk that's lactose free can be a nice way to treat them without causing upset. Okay, that's so good to know. Right, if I want to put something that's treaty for wee Alfie, who's under my chair at the moment, but under the tree at Christmas, what would be a good option for him? So the safest thing is to stick with a pet treat, then you don't have to navigate the human food issue. Um, so something like a duck tender oh. can be really lovely. This is actually the best seller in New Zealand, and I have to say for good reason. I use these in clinic, and very rarely would you find a dog that would actually refuse to have one of these. They're <laughs> super moist and really tasty, and even when stressed, dogs find them really comforting. So that's my favorite. I always give my dogs some of those. Are they long lasting? Uh, for a, a moist treat relatively, but if you're wanting something that'll keep them busy while you're unwrapping your presents, for example, you'd be better to do something like a filled rawhide can be a really nice option. They've got a nice tasty center, but then that long lasting chew aspect of a rawhide. So that can be a better um, way to keep them busy and happy during present time. And if it, if it wasn't food related, what's another little option for Alfie under the tree? Yes, of course, we toys is another really good one. Um, so with our toys as well, just to make it easier, if you're trying to figure out what's a good option, we've actually put a little handy size guide on them. So we've got small, medium, large, so you can figure out what's the best um, sizing option for your dog and appropriate for their mouth size. Just make it a little bit easier for you. Fantastic. Okay, so that's Alfie covered. What about our cats in our family? You can't forget about our lovely cats. Um, so a really good option with cats is you can get catnip filled toys. We've Ooh. got one where you pull the tail on it and it vibrates and goes across the forest. That's quite a bit of fun. <laughs> Kids like that one as well. Or a feather wand it can be really lovely. Um, just something we didn't talk about before is be careful with things that have strings when you're unwrapping presents as well. So Ooh. something like a feather wand is quite safe. Tinsel, not as safe of an option for our pets. So nice to pick a safe toy for them. Yeah, Alfie would see that as food. <laughs> <laughs> we end up with tinsel in his tummy, that's oh, not a good thing. It does happen. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else you want to mention for cats or puppies or any other toys for this Christmas? Yeah, <laughs> just to remember those food groups, so you know, your fatty foods, your grapes, that sort of thing, stick to your pet products is a bit safer. And I think ultimately just try to enjoy the holiday season. They're part of a family, let's just have a bit of fun, eh? <laughs> Thank you so much for your advice. As always, Dr. Lauren, have a wonderful Christmas. No worries, you too. And all the Vitapet products that we have showcased this morning are available in your lo local supermarket. And you can get more expert pet advice on the website vitapet.co.nz.